My last full day on an Astra comes just as soon as I thought it would. Too soon. Oh no, it's the last day already. Yeah. Wait, we just go on a. Did we go on a big trip? I think he's gonna like mention that. Oh my gosh, we didn't even get to go on the trip with mm -hmm. them. No. In fact, uh, to get insider baseball or whatever the fuck or behind the scenes, uh, was it? From what I've heard, Howley was working on Chemia, which is the sequel to Ad Astra, and hit writer's block or couldn't proceed forward for a while. And so in the meantime, he started writing a kind of fan service-y uh, mid -quel called Interia. And so that's the trip. Okay. So he, there's a whole game that is that is just filling in the trip with Amicus and Marco that, that that we just skipped over basically, which, yeah, if the if we went on that trip, the pacing of this ending would be even weirder and longer than it already is because it's a fairly long ending, but it would have been like a whole thing and a lot of lore building and also like a hunt you have to like draw a bunch of new characters and settings because they're going on a trip so that's very much like a, a separate game kind of project yeah and no, i guess that makes sense i, I just want like a few like little little clips of them like here we are yeah. at this place here's us at this place just like some standalone drawings like almost like almost like postcards of like the places they went yeah. to as i sit on the stone bench breathing in the cool early morning air i find myself trying to think back on the last few months even the last few weeks it's all a bit blurry the day has continued in the same way me with too much time on my hands while amicus was kept busy by a rapidly changing empire with his assigned role already in progress i've mostly been left to wait and while the wait seemed torturously long it simultaneously seemed unrealistically quick it feels like only last week when I was touring the moon with Amicus, visiting the major cities on our way back to pick up Cassius. It had been one of the better experiences I had on at Astra, really getting to see how different each part of the moon could be for the first time, despite the basically universal culture. I got to see the breathtaking mountain ranges that surrounded the city of Lux. I rode giant, questionably safe amusement rides and ate all, ate all kinds of good food in the city of Adrotai, basically a giant Las Vegas. And all the while, I got to stay in luxurious villas owned by the Imperial family, spending much of my time taking walks, fishing, and even hunting with Amicus. And then we picked up Cassius and Alex, and the trip ended. That's been an awkward ride home. <laughs> I, I wonder if they've ever like ch regretted these sentences or if they even have like re uh, retconned any of them because it it functionally ends up being an outline for a game that they didn't even that I don't even know if they planned on making because now they're writing that game and those are the events that have to happen now. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, no, I understand that that would be kind of a uh, tricky. The, f the final boss, an awkward ride with family. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta draw everyone's expressions <laughs> just right. Show how, how painfully awkward it is for everyone. That was over three months ago. Ever since then, the only thing I've really focused on is my studies. I've learned enough of the language that I can hold stilted conversations with Amicus. He always enthusiastically tells me I'm doing an amazing job, even though I know I probably sound like a very young child to him. <laughs> One with a heavy, clumsy accent. I don't think I've done enough. None of, the, none of this is going to help me with my mission on Earth. Not since the experience I had with Amicus in the archives have I heard from the Monitor, let alone the parents. Instead, they seem to be content to let me drift around aimlessly like I always have. It's gotten to the point that I even asked Amicus if what happened in the archives really actually happened and wasn't all just a dream. And speaking of dreams, I haven't even given, been given one of those. Not even an all is well from the space dragon. What's most infuriating is that Amicus is in contact with them. Of course, he's asked on my behalf if they have anything to say to me, but nothing. I can only assume it's because they don't want to interfere with the process, even though they're going to have to tell me something. At least direct where to go first. Otherwise... They're probably just going to hospitalize me when I show up talking about space wolves and the impending ass assimilation of the Galaxias. I feel my insides twist uncomfortably, like they have been for the past several months, 
and especially in the past week. I'd had to leave Amicus's room because I didn't want to keep waking him up with my tossing and turning. Then, uh, that and lying there awake, watching Amicus sleep innocently next to me is just a bit too much for me right now. I know I should be savoring these last moments, but instead I find myself twisted up in worry. I'm going to be alone. It's something that hasn't really scared me much before I came here, but after being with Amicus for so long, and now with this path ahead of me, I go from hugging myself to twirling the now fitted ringer, the now fitted ring on my finger. I had to get it fitted. <laughs> it's been a security blanket of sorts. We had debated on whether or not to marry before I leave, but eventually decided Amicus should lay some legal groundwork first so as not to cause too much of an uproar. He has eight years to do it, after all. It'll give me something to look forward to when I return. Oh no, what if he's, like, not able to do it? I just imagine mm -hmm. a situation where eight years pass and then you come back and it's like, oh, we didn't really fix the whole gay marriage thing yet, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> it, it worries me, because it's like the, uh... The, it's like the uh, it's the, it it sets them up for almost the exact same kind of regret they had when they didn't when like they 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 had fights and they kept putting it off and kept not quite getting together and then Marco died yeah and like that regret that Amicus li lived with that they just and like that's why he was so determined to just go at it immediately <laughs> the moment Marco was there because they're like I'm not letting this this chance pass again and so it's like. All the best, all the best things do happen when Amicus just commits and does something immediately instead of putting things off and hoping he, that things work out, which is like which his is, mo. Yeah, that's kind of how he works. Which makes me worry about him as an emperor a bit. Our entire lives adjusted to fit the schedule laid out by the parents. This is all assuming they're still that they're telling the truth and not for the first time. I wonder if I can really count on them to make sure I return to Ad Astra. They're controlling everything, and I don't think they would be sending me on a mission that would somehow result in me never coming back here. Mm. That's the whole point. I'm uniting two different worlds. I sigh, closing my eyes at the ridiculous weight of that statement. That's assuming that they're telling you the truth about your goal, well, or the others, or what anything. What if you're uniting the worlds 200 years from now? The pr yeah. Is it <laughs> it's just that the, the problem with like trusting somebody... The problem with dealing with, with someone like this that you don't trust is that when they're the only source of information for several things, then you can't trust any of that information. So, like, it's, well, it's, 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 it's for me, it's debatable unreliable. whether or not the other exists and whether or not this eight-year mission is is what it is, or like any and everything's in question the moment anything any of it's in question when they're still the only source. It's the unreliable narrator problem, where it's like you you as the person reading, or us, or Marco as the person, like listening to these guys that is literally the only source of information that he has in regards to any of these yeah. subjects there is no one else who can give him information like he like he has no choice but to either accept it or to not completely and him accepting it is going to be is important for him to ever see amicus again so he just has to kind of roll with it and hope that yeah. they're telling the truth the fact that the, yeah, like they 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 picked marco based on compatibility with with amicus and then they just use the threat of losing this relationship as a way to manipulate them into doing anything they want. And it's like, how do you trust anything said yeah, by someone who's doing that? A person that? like that, you know, as opposed to somebody who What, just, you think they won't... Do you think lying's off the table when they're doing all that already? Like, well, If they had an altruistic end goal, they probably could just be like, hey, this is how things are. It makes sense we want to do this, right? Do you want to help us? And, like, if, if it's altruistic, people would be like, yeah, sure. Like, fine. Like, I'll, I'll help you with that. That's great. But to have to lie about it and manipulate means that your end goal is probably not a good one. <laughs> it means you're probably doing something nefarious. Or else you could just be honest with people up front with them. Yeah. You know. Why the hell did they choose me? I'm a fucking idiot. Oh, I open wow. my eyes again and I hear shuffling steps up the path. For a moment, I think it's going to be amicus it may, it may be having woken up and found me missing from the bed it's what i hope to see even though i know he, he needs his sleep i'm under enough stress right now and that i'm willing to be selfish but no i'm a bit surprised to see virginia walking along the main path head down as she manipulates one of those transparent tablets that the officials around here have as she gets closer 
I let out a soft cough so I don't surprise her. She looks up, her pace slowing before she realizes that it's me. I had assumed she would continue on her way, but now she deliberately walks in my direction. Pleasant early morning to you, Marco. Good morning. I must say that I'm a bit surprised to see you outside before Vita has even risen. I shrug. Had trouble sleeping. There's a pause, and Virginia gives me a look, one that I think is sympathetic. I imagine. More silence. Even now, at the very end of my journey on Ad Astra, I feel the stiff, awkward wall between us. There's no period in that sense. <laughs> Out of everyone I've met in the palace, I feel I know Virginia the least, and that includes Alex. While her intentions became clear to me, like everyone's eventually did, I literally know nothing else about her. I try to fill the silence. So, what has you up so early? Virginia raises an eyebrow. We have run out of time to negotiate funding for a few smaller provinces to the north. I'm using the early hours to make time. That doesn't sound fun. It is not meant to be fun. My life is now dedicated to serving the Empire. My, only, my own concerns do not matter. I sigh. Listen, I'm going to be honest here. You seem less happy than you were before you had this position. Again, my concerns are not important. I'm not saying they are. I'm just wondering why you wanted this position if it's only making your life worse. Virginia gives me a long, hard look. It always seems like our conversations become tense if we talk for more than three sentences. I think that you are not understanding the concept. My concerns do not matter. I do not matter. What does matter is the work I do. So you just wanted to run the Empire in a more efficient way or something? Yes, or something. You could just be blunt like the Chemians are and tell me. We get to the point, and then you wouldn't have to be so angry all the time. <laughs> the, look, the look on Virginia's face has me raising my hands defensively. Alright, sorry. I know whenever I talk, I just piss you off, so I'll just stop. What has you so brash this morning? Everything. I put out my hands to either side of myself as if to indicate the whole situation I'm in. But at least I'm not always, I don't know, acting like you're just an annoying distraction. Hell, even Cassius acknowledges my presence more than you do. Oh, we're being really confrontational right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit late now, but considering I'm in a relationship with your brother, maybe we should get to know each other when I come back. Virginia regards me for a moment, then takes a deep breath. Marco, I know you are leaving tomorrow, as we all do, but I also know that you'll be back and I will be made to work with you for a very long time, likely the rest of our lives. I frown. I'll be made to work with you. That is not a good <laughs> phrasing. How would Virginia know I'll be working with the Empire? Is she supposed to know that? I start to wonder if the parents are talking, just not to me. Virginia answers that question next, though. Amicus told me, as he should have, considering my position. It will help us prepare... At least in secret. I wonder if the parents told him that was okay. I don't want to deviate from their plan at all if it risks my mission. Virginia interrupts my thoughts, though. But I will say this once, and never again. So remember it when you return. I wait expectantly. While young, my brothers and I ex experienced very different sides of my father. He coddled Amicus, neglected Cassius... And for me, it was sort of an in-between. He paid me very close but strict attention. Unlike my brothers, who received lessons in math, science, and combat, I was given lessons in speech, etiquette, but mainly I was subjected to long, cruel sessions of behavioral molding. Oh, this is really sad. <laughs> he altered who I was as a person, something he would never do to his sons. Oh. Why? All I understood at the time was that he planned for me to occupy a prestigious position in the Empire. 
Still, I hated him for it. I felt almost no emotion when his sabotage ship crashed. Oh. Yes. Odd how he would protect himself. He project himself to be the most egalitarian emperor in our history, yet treat his own daughter like clay that he could shape in any way he wanted. Now I'm really at a loss for words. But, following his death and the resulting power struggle, I came to learn why. And the reason was rather simple. If I were to be the first female in a particular position of power, I needed to set an example. Not only that, but I would need to ward off attempts by those in power to undermine me. My mind was already trained for the deceit I would come up against, and it serves me well, even now as officials spread rumors and attempt to discredit me. Amateurish rumors, I'll have you know. It seems I can't think of anything more complex than saying the reason I get so much done is because I'm a whore. But you're, I mean, just saying, your, your brother is the emperor, so, and also, like, out, outwardly gay, probably. I don't think, I don't know who you slept with in this position. You're his fucking sister. Just saying. I don't think they mean him. Oh, oh yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Whatever. But father personally made sure I understood the most important lesson in this empire. Trust no male. It's what will keep me alive in this role. While I hate father, I understand him now which is better than just hate through all of this i can only sit there awkwardly on the bench okay so is that why you treat me the way you do i'm a male and you can't trust me marco i trust no one i simply don't have to worry about women because they hold no power yet <laughs> oh no oh no i mean yeah i tell you this so you might understand me as you wish. We will need to be close allies in the future, after all. While I'm sure my upbringing has little to do with my demeanor, the main reason for my shortness with you is simply due to your immaturity and lack of self-control. Amicus is no different. I grimace. I think I'm a, bet, a bit better than Amicus. Hmm. <laughs> yes, though he is growing into his position well enough. I'm sure you will as well. I'm not sure if that's encouragement or an insult. And thank you for saving my brother. I don't believe I've had the chance to say that yet. I know what I just said, but he is one of the few I can trust. To, to be himself. Then Virginia turns away, walking toward the Imperial ship. I really must be off to the city now. I'll be present for your departure tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Bye. I watch Virginia walk off into the dark, still feeling like I don't really know anything about her, even if she did kind of open up to me for the first time. At least she is willing to work with me on how to integrate humanity. I'd be worried. I'd been worried about that. Yeah, we we definitely will need Virginia's help. She mm -hmm. seems like she's on top of her stuff. I, I get the impression that Amicus, although like charismatic and charming, was focusing on building us a. a, a <laughs> a human-themed restaurant and has not been doing his politics very well. Yeah, they have opposite reactions where he, he does try to prioritize happiness and, and other things, whereas Virginia just gives herself entirely to her work, which makes her hard to interact with. But good at her job. You yeah. Know? I think that if I, if I was, if I was going to have an advisor, Virginia would be like somebody I would definitely trust. Virginia Wolf. I can't believe we didn't get... Oh my gosh. <laughs> But no, I like Virginia. I feel I feel sad she hasn't gotten like as much characterization. But I feel really bad for her in a situation like this. It makes sense she'd be the way that she is. I get it. The edge of the sky is just turning a little bluer as I make my way back to the palace. This is usually about the time that Amicus wakes up, so I'm not surprised to hear the shower running when I walk into his room. I think about going into the bathroom, then think better of it not wanting to hold up Amicus's morning routine. I have to admit that I'm a little disappointed that he didn't come looking for me first thing. Usually that's something he'd do if he's not sure where I am. For now, I just sit on the bed and wait, gradually growing more tired as the minutes go by, finally feeling like I might be able to get some sleep. Now just gonna join him in the shower? Yeah, just pop on in there. You're gonna be married soon, after all. Married eventually, after all. Maybe, this hopefully. Soon, eight uh. years, eight years <laughs> soon, if we're optimistic about yeah. every element of the story. <laughs> then the story slides, th then the door slides open and Amicus steps out, freshly showered and dressed. 
He smiles brightly when he sees me. There you are. I was wondering if maybe you'd gone to get breakfast early. Immediately I'm jarred by Amicus's overtly cheery de demeanor. This, his voice louder than usual. No, I just needed some air. Air? Is it too stuffy in here? No, it's, it's freezing as usual. I stand up and hug Amicus, when he, which he enthusiastically accepts. I sink into his furry warmth, and I feel my eyes sting as the reality of how much time we have left really sinks in. Amicus. My voice is small and sad, and Amicus quickly but gently sets his paws on my shoulders to push me back a step so he can look me in the eyes. Hey, I'm going to be back early tonight, as early as possible. Unfortunately, there are a few mandatory meetings involving the Chemians that I must attend. I know. Amagus had already tried to take the day off, but of course things came up. And don't worry, I've kept tonight simple. Just dinner between you and I. I can tell that Amicus is putting on a brave face. So I do the same, and swallow back the awful feelings that have been threatening to overwhelm me. Alright. I'll be waiting. Good. I won't be long. And the sooner I leave, the sooner I will return. Then you'd better get going. Right. Right away, Emperor Consort. <laughs> I grimace at the title I would hold if Amicus made our marriage official. It was a gross. Emperor Consort. Oh my gosh, what a horrible title. But he plants a kiss on my face anyway before pulling back and smiling at me. I love you, and tonight we shall be happy. I try to smile back as Amicus takes his leave, disappearing out the door, wondering how I'm going to manage to do that. Hopefully, well enough for Amicus's sake. Dude, I get stressed when I wake up and I know I have to go to work in like a few hours. I can't imagine having to know I was going to leave the person I loved for eight years and knowing this is going to happen <laughs> And this like is your tomorrow. last chance to be yeah. happy together. That, and it's scheduled an uh, event. It's so <laughs> immensely stressful. It's like knowing the day that you're going to die. It's just, it's just <laughs> some awful thought. Uh, I'm able to nap for a few hours, after which I walk through the halls, though at much a much slower pace than usual. I take a good look at everything, remembering. I walk past the meditation room, and I pause before opening the door. I miss... Neferu. <laughs> We haven't seen him for a while. I always miss him when he's not <laughs> here. I liked when, when when we went on an adventure with Neferu all by ourselves to go catch Alex. That was yeah. fun. Also, we've only seen this room one other time. It's funny we're back in here. Uh, we've been here twice? I th I don't, did we see the inside of it that time? Oh, wait. No, okay. Wait, wait, wait. There's once when Amicus is crying and another time when, when Cassius we was drugged out. But I don't remember if no, we saw the interior no, I thought or not. this was the room we saw. Well, it's you, the meditation you, you, room. You know better than me. But I, was like, this is, I thought this is the room we saw when we were about to go on, go dance in the play where we were dressed up like the tiger. Not that, uh, not that one, because it was the, um, it was the second trial because he was about to do the debate. And the reason why he was crying in here was I, I because it was the, it was I after our confrontation crying. because of Neferu. I remember that and, one. And that was all, and, and the tape for that's released during the second debate. So it was all the, it was all the second debate storyline. Because this is where he was the night before the debate while we were in the room. Because we didn't, we said, or he was here and we were on a bench somewhere. Like neither of us <laughs> went to the room. And the other time was because Cassius came in here to do the actual purpose of this room, which is the, the chemical meditation. To do the drugs. And then he's freaking out about a dragon. <laughs> that is what <laughs> happens when you do too many he's drugs. He's freaking out about a dragon. <laughs> I had made up with Amicus here after our fight a year ago. Oh yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> I should have just trusted <laughs> also, you. It was also on the screen while we were talking about well, it. Well, I, I, I knew, I, but that's the one I knew already. I forgot yeah. about this part. This is also where I accidentally got high on Somni Cassius has been smoking. The main reason I opened the door, though, is because I'm curious if any of the plants lying around. Maybe try to contact the monitor myself. Just in here snooping around for drugs? I don't see any. And remembering Cassius' horrible experience gets me to give up pretty fast, 
not wanting to be tormented by the monitor because I didn't follow their plan correctly. I head out into the gardens like usual, taking in the beauty of the arranged foliage for the last time. I remember my first morning here with Alex. He'd been so helpful and kind, and I feel some sadness at the idea I'd, I'll probably never see him again. It's dulled a bit, as I also remember that he'd only been sizing me up for manipulation, even then. While I feel our friendship had been partially genuine, I know that what he'd done is something I can never forgive, even though Cassius was able to. I mean, Cassius was able to because they were fucking... This room's so dumb. They were in it's the... so goofy looking. Yeah, it is goofy. Look at this goofy room with the TVs. I, I feel... Uh, I head back into... I head back in for a light breakfast, sitting on Amicus's usual bed. I watch the screens as I do, not surprised to see Amicus's face pop up a few times. He is the Emperor, after all, but I'm surprised to see my own face, and I know immediately that they're talking about us, speculating. This is such a good, this is such a Thanksgiving room of, of not wanting to talk to your parents. We're all facing opposite ways. Er, well, er, what, well, no, because you, you're presumably facing the food in the middle, but behind everyone is a TV. Oh, so you just like look past <laughs> no matter them where to you're watch looking, the TV. A, yeah, no matter where you're facing, there's a TV. Well, I mean, unless you're sitting on that one, that there's like yeah, one chair that's over there that has, you can't face the TV. Yeah, unless there's a TV on this side too. Oh my gosh. Us. TVs walls, all the walls, way down. TV. I tell Calm to turn it off and... Sit there for a bit, thinking back on what had happened in this room. As always, my eyes are drawn to the dark wine stain in Cassius's bed, something that remained even after a deep cleaning. What's dark? Why can't I was gonna say why can't you? Well, just replace it. <laughs> well, I mean, he says it hasn't been replaced. But, yeah. But I mean, why wouldn't you just replace it? Because it's a scary memory. Like you just replace yeah. it, flip it over. How about that? I'm wondering if there's just not really a family to have family meals here anymore, so just no one's just ever put here. Put pillows over it. <laughs> it hasn't been replaced, likely because Cassius doesn't really live in the palace anymore. Of course, it always brings to mind the moment he drank that poison. Exactly, wine. get the fuck rid of it. The day we'd all sat there, knowing something was wrong, yet Cassius still trusting Kato enough to never suspect an assassination attempt. Something he would have suspected if Nefero and I had been less cautious about releasing the information of the sabotage ship. It probably wasn't enough to convict him on a trial, but all would have known. Even now, I'm not sure why I'd handled, handed the wine to him, knowing it would end badly, knowing I should spill it, just like I did the first time, my, my first time serving. That's what, we, that's what we were all, that's what we said back then, Marco. Yeah. You didn't listen to us. I don't know while why you didn't just yeah, spill it. While that scene was playing out for the first time, I'm just like, this is a poisoning yeah, no, the obviously. Be, they couldn't They couldn't have sold it more by the fact that they explained specifically that Kato's not eating or drinking anything. And I'm like, uh... Well, and, and then he was, like, he, was uh, like, he was like, oh, drink, like, drink your wine. Like, he was, like, very much like, oh, drink, like, oh. <laughs> it's like, no I'm kidding. And it, plus, it, it, is, it is one has... of the strange moments <laughs> where, specifically, Marco hears the parents saying that he's on the right course. Mm-hmm. Which is also what he hears right before he attacks Kato and everything goes wrong. And I almost wonder if hearing that he's on the right course might have like a would you kindly effect. Where Marco kind of loses his free will in those moments. Like I wonder if there's a through line there. Because right before he makes I mean, really big mistakes he hears that line. I mean you're being generous. Like you're, you're give, I mean that, that would be nice, nice for him to give him the benefit of the doubt there. But I mean he's from Earth and he knows Rome's reputation with poisoned wine. Yeah. Like he should fucking know better well i mean we know that he very they like they've literally compelled him before to miss when he tried to kill amicus like they they they've that, uh, they, that they're, they, that they have managed true. to physically manipulate space <laughs> like not just like get to like the most of what they do is they tell people at the right time to do the right thing or whatever and they do they 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 hint around and their most direct interference that they that is advertised is that they like com they commit miracles for people to keep to bring them back to life uh but he they literally stop you from killing amicus by redirecting your attack which is such a direct specific and, and kind of powerful interference in that moment that it makes me wonder if why don't they just completely puppeteer a person to get their whole point across yeah. it just makes me wonder like 
all the times that they do say you're on the right course, they're not, they never seem to be to reassure Marco in a moment of doubt because he's been ha- he's been having tons of doubt all the time without any kind of contact from them. He's just neglected and, and avoided and, and abandoned this whole time. But right in moments of action, they come in to say that. And it makes me wonder if it, it, it does actually have a compelling effect. I mean, I do think that if I was like in a moment of action and they, they you know, gave me some like if I was completely not expecting, I was just doing some normal thing. And then I heard that in my head. It would almost make me very worried at that moment. <laughs> I was like, why does this have significance? Like, if I was making coffee tomorrow morning, and I was, like, stirring it, and I heard, you were on the right path. I'm like, wait, why did you need to tell me that? It's like what the equivalent of being told... It's like, it's like being, the equivalent of being told that your coffee is meat-free. And you're like, I wasn't questioning that until you why said that. Why did you say that? That wasn't really... Suddenly, I'm really aware of my path. What's going on here? <laughs> I saw a sunscreen that was vegetarian and gluten-free. And you're like, what is? And I'm like, why involved? do you tell me? This? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Yet I did what I was told, almost like a robot. Maybe because I'd been conditioned to do whatever the wolves told me. I don't blame Cassius for staying away from the palace after what he went through. An assassination attempt resulted in a medically induced coma. Does things to the mind, according to him. I wonder if that includes forgiving a spy that's partially responsible for dozens of deaths. Feeling slightly nauseous, I I send the rest of my food back. I decide not to think about Alex anymore. That's a thing you can do. You can just stop thinking about things (laughs) that you choose. That must be nice. (laughs) Wow. Just shut that off. Yep. Don't worry. I've got intrusive away. Just spray yeah, it around. Just spray my eyes. <laughs> just spray my eyes. I'm distracted by the pain. I was going to say, that'd be pretty anything. distracting, I guess. There's several <laughs> things you can spray in your eyes that would be immensely distracting immediately. I'd be like, hold on. I was, I was going to get hairspray out of the bathroom. Spray uh, right in my eyeballs. Just encase them in hardening. Uh, <laughs> feeling like the cat had never gotten what he deserved. I need to, I need to distract myself until Amicus gets back. So I head for the baths. It's become part of my routine, and part I always look forward to the most for a couple of reasons. First, it's just nice to soak, and second, because I see the person I often run into here. Yeah! Oh! Yeah! Dick's out! <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, uh, gun's out, sun's out, but I'm like, what's dick's Buns out? out uh, dick's uh, out, uh... <laughs> are nothing. His, are his buns always out? Well, his buns are... It's guns does he out, have a, Does out. he have a back to his wrap? What? We don't see... Oh, oh Neferu? He's asking if his cheeks are always out? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I, I, I don't think we've seen his, his him from behind. So I don't know what his, his, like... He has, like, a really tight, like, front wrap thong badge thing. Like, there's, like, a codpiece shield thing going on there. Yeah. And, but it just goes between his legs, which is, like, a rope around his hips or something. So it's, like... I'm, like... Is the back, like, a fundoshi situation where it's just like a th- like a thong, or is it like does he have a matching back end too or something? Neferu, why won't you turn around? The, why won't you spin for the audience the, in this the, the static fan, visual The fans novel? have searing questions. <laughs> why won't you answer us? <laughs> this is important lore. <laughs> yeah, important for the canon. Yeah, I watch anime for the plot. <laughs> <laughs> he soaks in the pool. Head leaning back against the edge, eyes closed. While I may have lost my friendship with Alex, I've gained a great one with Neferu. Yeah, look at him, he's much better. I'd trade Alex for Neferu any day. Good thing, too, considering he's the only other sapien that's regularly in the palace during the day. I walk over to the benches, beginning to strip off my robe, glancing at the jackal. You know, it's not safe to fall asleep in the bath. Neferu shifts raising an eyebrow even though he keeps his eyes closed. I appreciate your concern, but I feel that the sensation of water filling my lungs would be sufficient to wake me. The best song. And I was not asleep. I was awaiting your arrival. I walk up to the edge of the pool, Neferu turning his head to look back at me, not even glancing at my naked groin. Really? I didn't think you'd be here. Amicus told me the Kimian meeting he had Kimian meetings to go to. 
Briefly, I feel a little upset at the idea that Nefero might stay at the palace to see me while Amicus w wouldn't. But only briefly. Things are different for the Emperor. Luckily for me, my presence is no longer requested at such meetings. It matters little. I have direct access to the Emperor anyway. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for him because we know that he shields his feelings constantly and doesn't actually show us how he's actually thinking about stuff. So my presence is no longer requested is a hell of a statement that might not be a, uh, if coming from a happy place. Yeah, and him just him just like shrugging it off, being mm. like ha 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 ha. But in reality, like as we've learned, as we've grown to know Neferu, we've also learned that like his relationship with like his family is completely uh, yeah. in tatters, and he has he has like no support system. And when he leaves here, I'm worried about what's going to happen to him, which is yeah. like what I'm the most worried about. It's like once we leave, and like Amicus is still here. Like what is is Neferu? What is Neferu gonna do? Is he gonna stay here? Like I feel I'm worried about him. Well, I gotta given give if we if we apply meta knowledge and cheat a little bit, the next game's called Chemia. So well, and they're, and and this game's ending with them negotiating the pre the peace treaty with with Chemia and dealing with all this shit. So I imagine. The next game's a lot of Neferu trauma because he probably goes home with Amicus and they're probably dealing with some shit because it's like the, given the fact that there is a game and a story happening it means it's not going to be great news because <laughs> oh, no. you don't write conflict free stories where nothing happens <laughs> no, that's, no, I, I just want so I want Neferu I, like, I, I like think skipping game, through a field of flowers I, 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 and finding I think a cute the next boyfriend be really rough for and Neferu. fucking a bunch of people and having a great time. Like uh, that's the game I want. I don't. I, I don't anticipate good feelings. <laughs> no, I, I think. I think we're gonna deal with him, and the and the, we know that we know from his meltdown uh, that he is the least honest about his feelings out of basically any character in the story besides. I guess Alex. Wait, but Alex was doing it very much maliciously. Alex is a, is a, is a spy, literally. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a little bit different. <laughs> it's like his job. Neferu is just doing it to be almost to be kind to others by having them not worry about him. Yeah, I just the extent to which he was the thrown away character that nobody wanted to deal with, and that's why he's in this in this world in the first place. Just all that 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 adds texture to them him saying that his presence is no longer requested. I'm like, mm. which is such a bummer because he's was he's been so helpful and great to us, and he's been like such a linchpin in this entire story. Like, I mean, like the yeah. fact that nobody respects him from his whole planet is such a sad disappointment to me, like, considering how fact, great he is. Like even the fact that his presence in some way led to the peace treaty eventually going forward, it still feels like they're like. Well, he served his purpose. Step aside, like get out of the way. We still don't like respect you. Or we're still not. Well, like, we don't respect still not you thankful to him because you know because you're like a tail raiser, and because you almost got beheaded by Kato, and because you, we just don't really like you because you're a little puff, you know. Like it's it's not at all nice. I don't know. I'm just I'm worried about him. What like what's ah? It, ma it makes me <laughs> worried that happened to him. It makes me worried that the Chemians being angry about his near execution has less to do with valuing his life and more oh, to do definitely. with the disrespect that it yes. represents to them. Yes, hundred percent. Oh, and then, or, and then him getting and, beat up. Remember and, him getting beat up and kicked yeah. in the nuts? They were mad about that. He was beat up and almost executed, and both were and both are public knowledge. But Neferu even let that 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 him getting beat up thing happen so we could film it. So he could use it against Kato. And then Kato released it instead. Which, I mean, it's oh, such a bummer. He's been so helpful to he us. Like, he released like a poison pill. So like, that like, even if they stopped him from the execution, he had already released the thing that will further fuck up the negotiations. Yeah. And you gotta wonder whether or not it's, whether or not, like, they probably don't care. It doesn't feel like they care that much about him specifically. It feels more like it's the matter of pride. And even if it's not a matter of pride, it's a matter of performative pride. When you politi you like politicize something and you have a new chip that you can use in your negotiations, so you have to act like it's a big deal because even if you don't actually care, it's a thing you can now use against them, this thing that happened. Yay! Yay. <laughs> what a th this and his, poor And his character. gold is painted on! <laughs> <laughs> but it Just like his personality. <laughs> no! He's in the bath, though. How's it staying on? His... It's very good paint. Very good paint. It's also, very it's expensive. also all above the waist. 
It, also, it comes in a jar. <laughs> There's the snow. <laughs> I sigh. You should choose your words carefully in front of the Emperor's fiancée. Why must you think I always speak in innuendos? Because you do. I jump into the pool. It's not something I usually do, and I'm, ri I'm reminded why as my entire body burns for, after, uh, for a few moments. It's worth it, though, as I come to see... As I come up and see that I've accomplished my goal of splashing Neferu, the jackal in the middle of pawing water from his eyes. I must say, you become more like him every day. I move to the bench to sit beside the jackal, my own eyes stinging from the salty spring water. Because I'm more willing to shut you up? Yes, crude like the wolves, having to resort to physical methods because they can't use their words properly. <laughs> I narrow my eyes. Well, talk enough shit, then you're gonna get hit. Humans are the same, and I have a feeling jackals are too. How would you know? I've never raised a paw against anyone on this moon. Probably because you know you wouldn't stand a chance. Also, I have, I have seen you fight. First with Alex, and remember you accepted, you accepted a spar with Amicus a few months back? I seem to have forgotten. <laughs> well, I haven't. You took off all your clothes to tease him and then got floored in like a second. He struck me in the stomach when I was not ready, and very hard, mind you. Their combat techniques are as crude as their words. It's a fight. You weren't ready because you were still using your words after the fight had started. Even though the incident was a little worrying at the time, I find it mostly funny now and I smirk at the memory. How is that funny? I had to check into hospitals to make sure he didn't rupture anything. It was very dangerous to do such a thing in what was supposed to be a friendly spar. I think it was the way you went from showboating to making the weirdest noises after you fell on the ground. Amicus probably did take out a lot of his built-up frustration in that attack. Unfortunately, it resulted in even more tension between the two of them, which makes things difficult because I like them both. Let's, let's do a whole game where they're stuck together now. I'm just, I don't even know if that's what happens. I just, it's like reasonable extrapolation of where the story is going. Well, like, remember how we fucked each other that one time? That's, yeah, that's weird thing. It's, it's almost like why you can't, <laughs> it's almost like why you can't resolve the tensions between these characters. No, because you that would really, that you, you're like wasting the energy you could have the next game be spent on. I guess Nefaro at least still talks official business with Amicus. Nefaro huffs. <laughs> And like that blow, bringing that up is rather low of you. He's right. My mood is a bit strange today. And just like with Virginia, I find myself being more blunt. I shrug. Well, so was making shitty comments about old wolves. Neferu sighs loudly, seeming at a loss for words. A rare sight. I start to feel a bit guilty and clear my throat, changing the subject to the subject I'm not really sure how to explain to the Jackal. So, I'm leaving tomorrow. Nefaro's eyes light up. So I have heard, which is why I wanted to be sure that I would see you today, though I'm starting to regret it considering your mood. I slump against the ledge. Sorry, I'm feeling weird today. I'm just overwhelmed with everything that's happening. Well... You'll be returning, won't you? Yeah. Just not sure when that might be. Obviously, Amicus wouldn't have told Nefaru about our situation. Maybe even, even the parents directed him to. I'm guessing it was Virginia who told him I'm leaving. This is a temporary trip, is it not? You're engaged to be married, after all. I shift a little under his intense gaze. Yeah, but I miss my planet. I just need to be home for a while, so it might be a while. Nefaru is quiet for a moment. Does a while mean weeks? Months? I look away, over the surface of the steaming water. Maybe a bit longer. Years. It's more of a statement than a question. Maybe. Well... I must say that I was rather shocked to hear of your sudden plans for departure, that you would not tell me earlier. Is he putting it together? 
I half heartedly willed the parents to send me a signal that I could just tell Nefero everything. But like always, all is quiet in space. But now I'm less surprised, considering that it sounds like you yourself did not realize you would be leaving. I just didn't know how to tell you. Hmm. That, or you're hiding something. I look at him. What? Oh, Marco, you're not nearly as subtle as you think. Like I said, you're becoming more like Amicus every day. What do you mean? Well, your sudden interest in galactic affairs, for one. But mostly, it's your mere presence here in the first place. It makes little sense. Oh, yeah? Like in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> He's a very clever boy, this boy. I kind of hope that Nefaro figures it out on his own, considering that would dodge the issue of me telling anyone. Oh yes. If I were to guess, you are currently being trained by Ad Astra to assimilate your people with the Children of the Wolves. Did I see that? Okay, no. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought there was an uncensored panel for a second there, <laughs> but there was just a suspicious line. <laughs> a suspicious line? Ooh. I saw the pixels move and I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. How many times has that one come up? <laughs> I physically recoil at the idea, even though he's incredibly close. What? Hell no, I would never do that to my people, or to any people. Despite Amicus being Emperor, and despite his slow but steady improvements for the Wolven children, it's still not a situation I would put Earth in willingly. Nefero raises his eyebrow again, seemingly convinced by my, my reaction. Hmm. We regard each other for a moment, and Nefero blinks first. So... You really won't tell me? I didn't say I have a secret to tell, though. You're just assuming. Honestly, I'm a bit hurt that you feel you can't trust me with this information after all this time. Now I, now I raise an eyebrow. Nefaru, you haven't told me anything about your own situation on your planet, along with your family. Well, you've never asked. Because I know it's personal. You dodged the topic whenever I brought it up. It's a very long story. First of all, and second of all, is a story about me being a selfish, foolish brat. Of course I wouldn't want to tell you. But if I tell you, would you tell me? I think, somewhat tempted to make him tell his story, then just lie about mine, but only for a second. I sigh. No, I... I'll only be able to when I come back. Nefera's impish nature deflates pretty quick. Well... At least you're honest. I suppose I'll trust you that it's rather important and not my place to know. I admit that I'm still hurt by all of this, and that's not something I admit often. Sorry. I promise. You'll understand once I'm back. Again, I wonder if I'm already admitting too much. But years? I can't predict where I'll be in that amount of time. Back on Chemia? Possibly, if all goes well. Oh no! <laughs> I'll visit. I'm a citizen, remember? Well, they rarely allow use of the stretch for only visits, but being the Emperor's husband might make that easier. Yeah, I'll convince him. That seems to bring the issue of my sudden departure to a close. We sit there in silence for a long while, then I place a hand on Nefera's knee. It's not something I would have done in the past, considering the Jackal's reputation, but nothing about it feels sensual. Instead, I do it out of pure solidarity and friendship. And I wanted to say thank you, Nefaru, for everything. I don't think I'd be alive if you weren't there for me. I know you had your reasons, everyone did. But thankful, thank you. It is the duty of all Chemians to protect any sapient fleeing wolven violence, whether they be sibling, child, or as you happen to be, abandoned. I'll believe that after I visit Kimia and have a look for myself. I'll be your tour guide. And Nefaru, <laughs> if you can still tell me what's going on with your family, uh, you can still tell me what's going on with your family if you want. Definitely not. Do you really want to know? The situation is complex, unresolved, and seems, seems to always be changing. I mean, yeah, I'd like to know. It seems really important to you, but... It feels unfair that I'd make him make him tell me this clearly painful story without my own. Again, when I'm back, then we can trade. 
deal. Nefaro stands up, stepping up onto the bench before reaching down to pull me up. Now let's go for a walk before your wolf returns. I would like our last conversations to be of happier things. I take his paw, letting him pull me up. Then the two of us step out of the pool to towel off and dress. Nefaro is easily able to shift the conversation to things that are light and interesting, and it almost makes me forget that I'm leaving. Aww. Aww. Goodbye, Nefaro. Oh no. Yep. It's it's all coming to a close.